Sam Altman is championing a new bold mission to grant humanity an additional two decades of life within the next three years. Backed by an impressive $180 million, Altman's investment in retrobiosciences is not just about extending lifespans, but also about reshaping the very approach to longevity research. Diverging from the conventional path of singular focused therapies, Retro is simultaneously exploring five distinct avenues, from autophagy to cell rejuvenation. Their innovative strategies have seen them transform an abandoned retail space into a cutting edge laboratory, all while operating largely under the radar until now, yet as tantalizing as the promise of extended life sounds. It's not without its controversies and challenges, with personalities like billionaire Brian Johnson pushing the boundaries with radical anti-aging regimens and tales of tri-generational plasma swaps capturing headlines, the quest for a fountain of youth takes on new dimensions. As we delve deeper into the article, we'll uncover the science, the skepticism, and the stories behind this riveting journey towards potentially rewriting the narrative of human lifespan. All right, let's dive deeper into the heart of this revolutionary endeavor. At the core of retrobiosciences' groundbreaking work lies a marvel of molecular biology known as the Yamanaka factors. Now, for those not steeped in the intricacies of cellular biology, these factors are essentially a set of genes capable of turning back the cellular clock. Imagine them as a molecular reset button for aging cells. When activated, these factors can transform mature cells back into a pluripotent state, where they regain the ability to develop into any type of cell in the body. This discovery, which garnered Dr. Shinya Yamanaka a Nobel Prize, could be the golden ticket in our pursuit of extended youthfulness. But how does retro biosciences harness this power? Within their Redwood City laboratory, researchers are working tirelessly to fine-tune the application of these Yamanaka factors. Their goal? To induce partial cell reprogramming. I go over here to this side. Hi Sam, uh, my name's Peter Zeem, part of Transhumanism Australia. And uh, I've seen in the news some flack around you know, this techno-optimism that um, people are having about the future. And uh, you know, would you identify as a transhumanist and what would you say to the naysayers out there who don't see you know, the benefits of extending healthy human lifespan, enhancing intelligence and improving the well-being through the investments and also at OpenAI that you've made? I don't identify as a transhumanist I think humans are really great but I do I do agree that you know extending health span and augmenting humans is a, is a very good thing to do but also I'd say none of us are like blindly optimistic I mean we started this company because we thought AI could destroy the whole world and we wanted to figure out how to prevent that so I think balance here is really important this comes with most powerful technologies but this one in particular you know, the same thing that can help us cure all diseases could create new terrible ones, and we've got to reckon with that. So I think blind optimism is not the right answer, neither is blind pessimism. I've been impressed on this trip around the world with how much nuance people have and how they can understand. This means they're aiming to revert cells just enough to erase the damage of aging without triggering uncontrolled growth or potential risks, like cancer. It's a delicate balance, but if successful, it could redefine how we approach age-related diseases and longevity. Now, while the Yamanaka factors hold immense promise, they're not the sole focus. As mentioned earlier, Retro is exploring a multifaceted approach, and one such avenue is autophagy. Think of autophagy as the body's built-in recycling system. Cells break down and recycle damaged components, essentially cleaning house. However, as we age, this process becomes less efficient. By enhancing autophagy, Retro aims to rejuvenate cells from within, ensuring they function optimally for longer periods. Beyond autophagy, Retro is delving into the rejuvenation of blood plasma. This might sound like something out of a sci-fi novel, but bear with me. Blood plasma, the yellowish liquid component of blood, carries a myriad of proteins, and hormones, and nutrients. As we age, the composition of plasma changes, leading to various age-related ailments. By understanding and manipulating these changes, Retro hopes to develop therapies that can refresh our circulatory system, potentially slowing down the aging process at its core. Another exciting frontier in Retro's arsenal is the exploration of cellular communication. Cells in our body constantly communicate with one another, sending signals that dictate growth, repair, and numerous other functions. Over time, this communication network can become disrupted, contributing to aging. Retro's researchers are devising strategies to restore and enhance this cellular dialogue, aiming to create a harmonious symphony within our bodies where every cell plays its part to perfection. 
But here's where it gets even more intriguing. Retro isn't just looking inward, they're also examining the external factors that influence aging, from environmental stressors to lifestyle choices. By understanding the interplay between our genes and the world around us, they hope to devise holistic approaches to longevity, ensuring that their therapies are not only effective, but also adaptable to individual needs. Now, while all this research sounds immensely promising, it's essential to approach it with a dose of realism. The science of aging is complex, influenced by a myriad of factors both known and yet to be discovered. While retro biosciences and visionaries like Sam Altman are pushing boundaries, the journey to truly effective age reversal therapies is fraught with challenges. Regulatory hurdles, potential side effects, and the sheer complexity of human biology mean that we're still in the early chapters of this unfolding saga. Nevertheless, the strides being made are nothing short of awe-inspiring. With each discovery, each breakthrough, we edge closer to a future where age-related ailments are a thing of the past, where our golden years are truly golden. And while the road ahead is long and winding, with pioneers like Retro Biosciences leading the charge, the horizon looks brighter than ever. Sam Altman's foray into the realm of longevity and age reversal is nothing short of a seismic shift in the tech world. You see, Altman isn't just another Silicon Valley magnate throwing his hat into the health tech ring. With his track record at OpenAI and his visionary approach to technology's potential, his involvement signifies a convergence of cutting-edge tech and life sciences. But with such a high-profile entry, controversy inevitably follows. Critics argue that tech moguls dabbling in health can blur ethical lines and prioritize profit over well-being. Yet, Altman's motivations appear rooted in a genuine desire to push the boundaries of human potential. One can't overlook the undeniable benefits of Altman's involvement. His deep pockets and influence mean that research endeavors like retro biosciences receive the financial backing needed to pursue ambitious projects. In the world of scientific research, where funding can often be scarce and progress painstakingly slow, such investments can be a game changer. It allows researchers to explore avenues previously deemed too risky or ambitious, propelling the field forward at an accelerated pace. Moreover, Altman's background in AI and technology offers a unique perspective to the age-old problem of aging. He understands the power of data, analytics, and iterative development. By integrating tech-driven methodologies into longevity research, Altman and teams like Retro Biosciences can harness vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and iterate on solutions rapidly. Imagine AI algorithms sifting through decades of research papers in seconds, pinpointing potential breakthroughs that might have otherwise been overlooked. However, the blend of tech and biology is a double-edged sword. While it brings unprecedented resources and innovation to the table, it also raises concerns about the commercialization of life itself. The prospect of selling longevity treatments raises ethical dilemmas. Who gets access to these treatments? Will it widen the gap between the haves and have-nots, creating a world where only the affluent can afford the elixir of youth? Yet Altman's vision extends beyond mere profit. 